We are looking at examples of how to use partial fractions to integrate rational functions. So before we look at the integration and writing the fraction as a partial fraction, there's some background. Now, these are all integrals that you should be able to do currently with a simple, straightforward use substitution. Now, in this section of partial fractions, I'm assuming you can do all of them. So if you're not familiar with them, pause them, pause the video here and just write them down and check that you are happy that you are able to do all these integrals. Now, all of these integrals are integrals we've seen before in some of the previous videos in this integration techniques. So you should be able to get some information on how to get all of them. But for this section, I'm assuming that you can do these integrals. So let's get started. Now we're looking at rational functions. We've got a polynomial divided by a polynomial. We've said that if the numerator's degree is larger than the denominator's, then it's an improper rational function. So we must first check whether it's proper or improper. So there's two things to do when faced with the integral of a rational function. Firstly, is check if a simple substitution, a use substitution, can't simplify or solve the integral. Then you do that. You don't want to go for a complicated explanation when a simple one will do. And if this is an improper function, then you have to use long division before writing it as partial fractions. So let's start with some examples. Now we've seen this integral before in the first video. Now we're going to see how do I write this as partial fractions before I can do any integration. So firstly, if I factorize the denominator, we get an x, we've seen an x minus 3 and an x plus 1. x minus 3 times x plus 1. All right, so that is my integral. So if I've got that integral, now this denominator is a product of distinct linear factors. So I'm going to put the integral one side for now. I'm not worried about the integral for now. I'm looking at the fractions. I'll come back to this integral. So if I've got 5x minus 3 divided by x minus 3x plus 1, I can then say with confidence that this will be some real number over x minus 3 plus some real number over x plus 1, because that's how we get a single rational function, is by having a common denominator, and we saw in the first video how to get from the right-hand side to the left-hand side. Right. So now we need to solve for a and b, and there's a couple of techniques. Now, if the right-hand side, if I write that over a common denominator, x minus 3, x plus 1, my numerator will then be a times x plus 1, plus b times x minus 3. So if I look at the left-hand side and the right-hand side, our numerators have to be equal. So what I can then conclude is that 5x minus 3 must be equal to a times x plus 1, plus b times x minus 3. Now, the more of these you do, the more practice you'll get and things will stand out, but I'm going to write them out for now. So that is ax plus a plus bx minus 3b. So if I group all the a's and b's together, well not the a's and b's, the x's, this will be x times a plus b, and then my units is a minus 3b. So let's take a look, I'm going to write this again on the next page, and we take a look at some techniques how to solve them. So I've got 5x minus 3 is then equal to x times a plus b, plus my units, which is a minus 3b. Now, the longest way to solve these is with simultaneous equations. Because we see a plus b must be equal to 5, and I'm not going to solve this because this takes way too long. a plus b must be equal to 5, and a minus 3b must then be equal to minus 3. You can use simultaneous equations to solve it, but there's another way to solve it. If I go one step back, I had it looking like this. 5x minus 3 is equal to a times x plus 1 plus b times x minus 3. Now this must be true for all x's. So if I look at x equal to minus 1, it must also be true. If I substitute x equal to minus 1 in my left hand side and my right hand side, it must be true. So on my left hand side, if x is equal to minus 1, I've got minus 5 minus 3, which is minus 8. On my right hand side, if x is minus 1, in the first term, this becomes 0. So it's 0 plus minus 4b. 
So I can see that the value of B is then equal to 2. So that's how I can get to B easily. To get to A easily, I say, well, what about when X is equal to 3? If X is equal to 3, the second term on the right-hand side will go to 0. The left-hand side is 15 minus 3, which is 12. And 3 plus 1 is 4, so it's 4A. So I've got A equal to 3. So I've got my values of A and B. Now there's lots of different ways to get them. I've shown you simultaneous equations can work. You can use that. There's some other techniques. Sometimes it doesn't always work to substitute values in, and we'll see that later. So let's get back to our integral. We try to find the integral of 5x minus 3 divided by x minus 3x plus 1 dx. So that's the same as the integral of a. What is a? a is 3. So 3 over x minus 3 plus b, which is 2 over x plus 1. So now I write it as partial fractions. And these I can integrate very easily. That's 3 lin the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 2 lin the absolute value of x plus 1. So the hard work here is not necessarily in writing it as partial fractions. Well, that's what the hard work is. The hard work is not necessarily the integration. The hard work is writing it as a partial fraction. So you'll see the integration will always be one or two steps, but the work is in that partial fraction. All right, next example. x squared plus 2x minus 1 over x cubed minus x. So if I look at that denominator, that's the integral. My denominator, if I take x out as a common factor, I get x squared minus 1. So it's x minus 1 x plus 1. So again, my denominator is distinct linear factors, but I've got three of them. So my numerator, which is x squared plus 2x minus 1. Now we want to rewrite that as partial fractions. So we put the integral one side and we look at x squared plus 2x minus 1 divided by x times x minus 1 times x plus 1. That will then be equal to some constant over x, plus a constant over x minus 1, plus a constant over x plus 1. So if I write it as one fraction, my common denominator is going to be x, x minus 1, x plus 1, as it is on the left-hand side. So my numerators had to be equal. So on the left-hand side, I've got x squared plus 2x minus 1 will then have to be equal to a times x minus 1, x plus 1 plus b times x, x plus 1, plus c times x, x minus 1. And you'll see I didn't write the denominators, because the denominators are the same, so I know my numerators have to be equal. So now I'm going to look at some values for x to, to let a, b, and c come out. So if, if x is equal to 0, my left-hand side is minus 1. My right-hand side, term 2 and term 3, becomes 0, so the only... One left is the first term, and if I've got 0, then I've got minus a. If x is 0, I've got minus a here. So if minus 1 is minus a, then a is equal to 1. What about when x is equal to 1? My left-hand side, I've got 1 squared plus 2, so that's 3 minus 1, which is 2. My right-hand side, if x is equal to 1, my first term becomes 0, and my third term becomes 0, so I've just got the second term that's non-zero. So it's b times 1 times 2, so it's 2b. So I've got my value of b also equal to 1. If x is equal to minus 1, the left-hand side, I've got 1 minus 2 minus 1. So I've got minus 2. x is minus 1, so the first term becomes 0. The second term becomes 0, so only the third term is non-zero. So it's c times minus 1 times minus 2, so it's 2c. So that means the value of c is equal to minus 1. So I've got a, b, and c, so now I can look at my integral. So let's get back to my integral. So my integral of x squared plus 2x minus 1 over x cubed minus x dx 
is then the same as the integral of a over x, what's a was 1, plus b over x minus 1, so it's b is also 1, plus c, which was minus 1 over x plus 1. Now, please remember to put everything in brackets, and please remember your dx. Now, take note, this minus 1 in the numerator, you could have put it in front. It doesn't make a difference. And yet again, these are three very straightforward integrals. Lin of the absolute value of x plus lin of the absolute value of x minus 1 minus lin of the absolute value of x plus 1 plus c. So again, the integration isn't the challenge. The challenge lies in the writing it as partial fractions. We'll be looking at some more examples of different types that comes up. Up until now, we've only looked at linear factors that are not repeated in the denominator. We're going to build on that in the next video.